Now let's read question one. In diagram one below, St. George's cross is red and 6 cm wide, and its white border is 2 cm wide. Show that the total area of St. George's cross is 800 centimeters squared. In this situation, we already know what area they want us to find, so it's a bit easier for us to know whether our answer is correct or not. And it's easy for us to tell if we're deriving from the answer that they want us to get. And we can see the entire cross down here. They already illustrated for us in diagram one. The first thing that we should do when we get this question, we can see that uh, there's no formula to, to calculate the area of a cross. So we can try to break it down into smaller shapes, in which case we can see that we can break it down into a lot of rectangles. So one way to break them down is through creating Two lines over here. So we can calculate three separate areas for three rectangles and just add them up all together in the end. So starting off with this rectangle, we can try, try to calculate the length and width first. For the length, we already see that it's 10 cm. So we can add 10 cm here. And we want to multiply it by the width, which is down here. You can see that there's they already give us two six and another two cm. So the addition of all of them would equal the width. So six plus two plus two is ten, and ten times ten is one hundred. Since this uh, rectangle is one hundred cm. Oh, sorry, square. Since the square is 100 cm squared, we can tell that this identical square should also be 100 cm cubed. So multiplying 100 by 2, we get 200 cm squared. And finally, for this last larger triangle rectangle in the middle, we can calculate the width by adding up all of these values to the side. However, the length is already given to us, so there's no need to have any sort of calculations for that. So moving on to the calculations, we have 60 as the length, multiplied by 2 plus 6 plus 2, which is 10 once again. So we get 600 cm cubed. CM squared. And to get the final area, we can just add both of these. In which we would get 800 CM squared, just as the question mentions. Now, on to question two. They show us diagram 2, and the question says, using diagram 2, show that tan theta is 1 over 2. So first, let's identify where theta is. We can see that they've already labeled it for us over here. The first thing that we can do is try to identify a right angle triangle that includes theta, because we know that because they're using tan, they want us to find a right angle triangle. And we can already see one. In use over here, if we look closely. With this right angle triangle, we can already apply the rule for tan theta, which is that tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent side. In this situation, the opposite length is already given to us, 30 cm. While the adjacent side is all of these values added up together.
as a result, we will be getting 30 over 60, which is equivalent to 1 over 2, which is what they have given us. We can see this is a relatively easy question since that they only give one mark to this question actually. Moving on to diagram three, they show us the same diagram, but they show us an addition, this right angle triangle added here through a zoom in view. And let's see what question they want us to answer. Find the value of x to the nearest one decimal place. Okay, so first of all, we can see that in the zoom in view, they already, they actually use theta, which means that they want us to use the previous value that we found. Oh, we didn't actually find it, we showed it, but they want us to find the value of theta, which we can find. this we will be getting if you were to use a calculator we'll be getting 26.565 so we already have this value which is 26.6. And the, the reason they already show that this is a right angle triangle means that they most likely want us to use that rectangle. So if we were to find the value of x, we'll most likely have to use either tan, cos, or sine. So in this situation, we could possibly use sine. which would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And you may think that the value of the opposite is not given, but if we see they actually mention that this length is 6cm. And we can assume that these, both of these sides are actually the same length. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So each of these sides are actually 3 cm. So the opposite, as in the length here, would be 3 cm. And the hypotenuse, which is x, is unknown to us. And it's what we want to find. So in this situation, to find x, we Divide 3 by sine 26.6, in which we would get from 6.708. But recall that the question wants the value of x to the nearest one decimal place. So we would say this is 6.7. Moving on to question four. Given that the area of triangle T2 is 44 cm squared to the nearest cm squared, find the total area of blue triangles in the union jack to the nearest cm squared. Now let's take a look at union jack again. So by T2, they mean this, they already say that is 44 cm squared. You can actually see that throughout the entire union jack, the entire, all the blue triangles are either T2 or T1, which means that as long as you can find the area of T1, we can find the total area of all the triangles as they're all just the same triangles being used again and again. You can actually just count that 
P2 is used one, two, three, and four times. And P1 is also used another four times. So the goal now is to find the area of P1. So one thing we can see is that P1 over here actually P1 over here actually has another right angle triangle. And we already know the value of theta, which is 26.6. .6. And we actually know the value of this length as well, which is 25 minus x. And if you calculate, it would be 25 minus 6.7, as we previously found. And we will get 18.3, which means that this length is 18.3. And the way to find the area of a triangle normally is 1 over 2 times the base times height. So from this, we can tell that this is the length that we want. And we can get this length through the usage of sine cos 10. Since it involves the opposite side and the only other side we have available is the adjacent side, it's tan that you should be using. So tan 26.6 to get the opposite over adjacent, in which case opposite is what we want to find. Adjacent is 18.3. So the The opposite would just be 1026.6 multiplied by 18.3, in which we would be getting 9.15. So this side would be 9.15, and we can just apply the area of a triangle to solve the question. To solve to find the area of T1. So it'll be 1 over 2 multiplied by the height, 9.15, multiplied by the base. This would equal 83.72. And as previously mentioned, there are four blue uh, triangles that are, have the same area as T2, and there are four blue triangles that have the same area as T1. So what we would do is we would first multiply 4 by the area of T2, 44, and add it with 4 times the area of T1, we can, which we can just round off to 84. And from a calculator, we would get 512 cm squared. And this would be the total area of blue triangles in the Union Jack, the nearest centimeter squared. The final for the final question, the blue triangles represent Scotland in the Union Jack. Determine the percentage of the area of the flag that is represented by Scotland. So if they want to determine the area of the flag that is represented by Scotland, we actually already know this value. We already found that found it out to be 512 cm squared. So another value that we should calculate is the total area of the flag itself. If we go back to find the flag, we can see that they already give us the length 60 cm and the width 30 cm, so we can find the total length already. Which will give us 1800 cm squared. So the area of the area of the flag that's represented by Scotland 
over the area, the entire area of the flag, multiplied by 100 is how we would receive, we would get the percentage of the area of the flag that is represented by Scotland. In this case, we would be getting 28.44. Which we can just say is 28.4%. And yes, that's the end of the series of questions. One thing that you probably noticed is that all of the questions were sort of progressive, in which the answer to the previous question would help you answer the subsequent question, which are mostly what IB criterion D questions are, IB MYP criterion D questions in mathematics are like. They like to utilize values from previous questions to help you answer the next questions. So they're sort of all connected to each other. So it'll be really hard to answer the entire thing if you're stuck in the middle 